and it's going to do two or three things. First of all, we're going to be introducing, or we are introducing, anti-social behaviour hotspot patrols, initially in 10 police forces around the country now, this week, rolling out to every single police force by next April. So uh, the Police and Crime Commissioner will identify particular neighbourhoods where ASB is a problem and will and use this money to surge police officers into that area. Um, so I was up in Lancashire um, just a day or two ago and they've identified 14 places in Lancashire and that'll be replicated uh, across the entire country by next April. So we'll see more officers patrolling these hotspots. We're also introducing uh, immediate justice, which is where people who are caught uh, committing acts of antisocial behaviour will within uh, the target is 48 hours do things for the local community like clean up graffiti, clean up streets, that kind of thing, um, to pay back to their local area. There are various other measures. We're banning nitrous oxide, those little um, laughing gas canisters uh, you often see lying around everywhere and giving police and local councils more power to issue things like community protection notices so they're going to have more powers to protect their local community. So a big package, £160 million, um, designed to hit ASB head on. When you say you're banning nitrous oxide, how, how will that ban be in effect? Because surely people will be able to get it online, won't they? Well, it'll be it'll be um, essentially uh, scheduled under the 1971 Misuse of Drugs Act, so it'll be illegal, like you know, cannabis or cocaine or whatever else. And it means it means uh, supplying it or using it without a legitimate reason uh, will be uh, illegal. It'll be a criminal offence. There are some legitimate commercial uses, like people use it for um, whipped cream, for example. It's used in making semiconductors as well. So using it for those purposes will be absolutely fine, but using it for personal consumption won't be. How will we know in say six or twelve months? Month's time, this £160 million has been well spent, Minister. What would we be looking for? Well, I think we're going to be uh, tracking this through the crime survey of England and Wales to make sure that people's perception and experience of antisocial behaviour declines. It's worth saying that since 2010, um, criminal damage has gone down by 65%, violence has gone down by 41% since 2010. But there is a so those crimes have gone down a lot. But there is a perception, a feeling that some high streets or parks and those sort of places um, do sometimes have a feeling of menace if people are hanging around, young people in particular, hanging around, um, you know, if they're using nitrous oxide, for example. Uh, and that's the kind of thing we want to tackle so people feel like yeah. safe and, and comfortable on their own high street or in their own neighbourhood. Well, I mean, th th it's interesting you say that about whether the stat statistics actually bear out the feeling because... You're a London MP. I remind my listeners mm. you're in Croydon South. You live in mm. London. I live and work in London. I have to put it to you, Minister, in London at times it doesn't feel as though crime is going down whatsoever, does it? Well, I mean, th those are the national figures, as I say. Um, you know, violence down by 41% since 2010. Uh, you know, I think Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, responsible for policing, um, does have a lot more uh, work to do. There are, there are some particular crime types, like uh, knife crime, for example, uh, used by drug gangs, where uh, Sadiq Khan, as Mayor of London, d does need to take more action. Um, we've got record numbers of police now. Across England and Wales, we've got 149,572 police officers as of March. That's more than we've ever had at any time in this country's history. And one of the reasons we've hit that record number is to have more police on the street, particularly in hotspot areas, um, but also more resources for investigating and following up crime as well. All right. You, you've referenced Sadiq Khan a couple of times. Do you think it would be different under a Conservative mayor? then, if he were to be elected or she next month? Yes, I, I do, uh, next year, without question, absolutely, yeah, because we've seen Sadiq Khan like, planning, to, he's got a plan to close, right. I think, 37 London uh, police stations. He hasn't gripped uh, crime or the Met properly. Uh, you know, we ran a, but, this police recruitment programme I mentioned. Every single one of England and Wales's 43 police forces hit their recruitment target, with one exception, which was Sadiq Khan and the Met, where... Right. Although, thanks to government funding, they do also have record police numbers, um, they could have had a 1,000 extra police. The government provided the funding for that, but thanks to Sadiq Khan's well, ineptitude, those extra 1,000 officers weren't hired. OK, well, you're, you're obviously a, a fierce critic. Who are the Conservatives who are running to be mayor next year? Well, there are two uh, candidates, uh, Susan and Moz, and I saw both of them, actually. They came to Croydon uh, on Saturday, right. came to Purley, and they gave, both gave a little speech. Do you and think I they're household names? 
Um, look, I mean, they're not um, they're not global superstars, but they are very committed campaigners. Moz is a, a case here. King's Council has been prosecuting criminals in right. London for the last 20 years. And Susan is a London, a former leader of Harrow Council, former leader of the Conservatives on the London Assembly, holding okay. Sadiq Khan to account forensically uh, week in, week out. So they've both, they're both very strong candidates. Um, I haven't decided, by the way, who I'm going to vote for of okay. the two, but they're both very strong candidates. And they'd both yeah. be a massive improvement on Sadiq Khan, that's for sure. Final question for you. As, again, as policing minister, I take you now to Sussex, West Sussex and Lansing. You may be aware of the video of a PCSO refusing to attend a, an alleged assault at a co-op store just around the corner, telling a member of the public who asked him for help, if I go, I'll have to deal with it. Do you support the actions of that police officer, uh, PCSO? No, I don't. Categorically not. We, we expect police officers and PCSOs to protect the public and to proactively intervene. I've seen that clip you're referring to online. Uh, I was shocked by it. It's completely wrong. Uh, and that is not what I expect uh, our police officers and PCSOs to do. They should be proactively intervening to protect the public and where a criminal act is occurring or where the public are under threat, which was clearly happening in that case, they should get around there quickly and take action. Grateful for your time today, Minister. Thank you. Policing and Crime Minister Chris Philp appearing here on LBC4 before 8 is the time. Let's pick up on the uh, actions that we've heard from the Minister there, or the, the action that they want to take. Aziz in Heston, do you think it will make a difference, Aziz? Good morning. Hi, good morning, Nick. I'm an immigrant myself, but a very successful one. 